Good morning, everyone. This is my demo on how to make a three-part rigid plaster mold from a simple everyday object like a light bulb. A quick introduction to how to get started. I have my light bulb and the first thing I need to do is draw parting lines on it. The parting lines in the case of the light bulb are going to divide the form into three equal parts and you can see that I've numbered them. The reason why we want to divide the mold into separate parts is because of something called an undercut. Notice that this three-dimensional form, because it wraps around in space, uh, it has a back side and a front side, and it's got um, this neck as well. So if I were to make this mold a one-piece mold, it would surround the entire light bulb and I wouldn't be able to draw the light bulb out of the plaster mold without breaking the bulb or the plaster. If I were to make a two-part mold, I would draw a dividing line perfectly around this bulb right at the halfway point. And then I would lay it sideways and I could pull this out this way and the top part of my mold would come off the top here. The problem with a two-part mold on an object like a, a light bulb is you have to get that parting line very, very precisely exactly at the halfway mark. If I think about the round shape of this bulb and if I get my parting line a little bit too high, it's now wrapping around the bulb a little bit too much and I'm not able to pull the bulb out cleanly. And again, my bulb would have to break or my plaster mold would have to break to get the bulb out. So we've devised a way of doing a three-part mold, which just makes the success rate of these, especially for first-time mold makers, much greater. If you do a two-part mold, the failure rate of your first-time mold is much higher. So if you divide it in three, it's just a lot more foolproof. You're able to um, have a successful first mold making project. If you don't have a light bulb, and would like to do some other object that you have lying around your house, another good option is a glass bottle. And so here I have an example of a glass soda bottle. You could also use a hard plastic bottle, but make sure it's not a soft, squishy water bottle, that kind of thing, uh, won't be strong enough to support the, the process. The difference with a bottle though, is we have this bottom side, this dimple on the bottom, which causes another undercut. So not only do we have the undercut of the three-dimensional form of the bottle itself, we have this dimple, and so this actually needs to be a four-part mold. So I divide the main body, just like I did the light bulb, into three parts. You can see my three parting lines there. And then I have a fourth part, which you can see that line right around the bottom, which will come off in this direction. And that allows us to get the detail of this textured base and it also allows us to get that dimple on the bottom of the bottle. Lastly, we'll need a pour spout for our mold. And the pour spout is going to be located, in the case of the bottle, just at the top of the bottle cap and it's going to extend off the top. In the case of the light bulb, it's going to be this black button at the bottom of my light bulb. The pour spout is difficult conceptually with mold making and will become clear as you see this entire video and watch the whole process. But essentially the pour spout is going to be an extension of my light bulb or my bottle and it's going to become part of the positive form of the mold. It's important to distinguish that because the process of mold making you're actually creating a negative form around the outside a reverse form around the outside of my bulb, but the pore spout is part of the positive form of the object. Let me show you a little about my setup that I have here. So I'm working in my backyard. Um, if you have a space in your backyard to work, I recommend that just because working with plaster can be quite messy. And uh, if you have to work inside, Maybe do it in your kitchen, 
somewhere that you can easily clean up the floor. Um, and we've provided you with a plastic drop cloth. I definitely recommend putting that down, especially if you're working inside, just to contain any mess that you might be making. You can see I have my clay over here. I've got a work surface, just a piece of plywood um, that I'm going to do all my mold making on and try to contain all my mess within that uh, surface. I've got my light bulb, my bottle, and I've got some tools over here. Now I believe Carolyn gave you a, a rubber spatula and that will work fine. Um, I actually personally use this the most and it's just a um, spatula that I got from um, Daiso actually, but the rubber spatula will work fine. Just a regular old tablespoon will work in a pinch. I also have my fettling knife, which if you bought clay tools at the beginning of the semester, you'll have one of those. The Murphy's oil soap or, and or Vaseline work as a mold release compound, and that will keep the plaster from sticking to itself during the process. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm, I need to do is roll out my clay into a slab so that I have a thin slab of clay to work with to build my parting line, it's also called mold dams. I use a piece of fabric, a piece of denim that to roll my, my clay out on. If you don't have something like that, uh, use some newspaper. Uh, you just want something so that your clay won't stick to the table surface that you're working on. In this case, I couldn't find a piece of denim that I usually use, so I had this old canvas tote bag that I'm going to use. Okay, I'm going to start by getting some clay out. So if you have a wire tool, you can use that. Otherwise you can just grab a chunk of clay. And I'm going to wedge that out. Now, if you have a rolling pin, I recommend using a rolling pin but obviously you don't want to use your mother's nice kitchen rolling pin that's going to get really dirty and ruined. Um, I just have this old um, big piece of dowel that I use uh, for rolling out clay at home. Um, or you can just wedge it out with your hand and get it nice and even thickness depending on what you have available to you. Now you want to roll this out to a nice even approximately half inch slab. You don't want it too thin and you don't need it too thick. So I'm just gonna roll this out. Okay, I've got a ruler here. I'm going to use that as a guide so that my strips are nice and straight. I'm gonna cut and then I'm gonna measure one inch over. And we want a nice precise one inch wide strip that will make our mold thickness pretty consistent. Okay, so there are my three strips. You can see them. Okay, so next we need to actually set up our objects so that we can make the mold. So I'm going to take my light bulb and I'm gonna center it on my board. Um, if you don't have a piece of plywood, you could probably go to somewhere like Daiso or the 99 cent store and get a cutting board that's really cheap or something like that. So I need to orient my light bulb so that it's facing up and it's nice and level. So in order to do that, I need to put some clay underneath it to hold it up. So I'm just gonna grab some chunks of clay and I'm gonna try not to get clay on this top portion of my bulb just because that's the part I'm working on and I want it to remain pretty clean and I just don't want that to move around on me at all so I'm just gonna make sure that it's nice and snug and firm we're gonna start by making ourselves a pour spout so the way I like to do that is take this is why I made three strips in a, instead of only two I'm gonna take a little end of my strip cut it off and I'm going to fold that into a little cone shape. Think of a funnel that you would pour if you're trying to pour a liquid into 
a bottle, you'd want to use a funnel. So I'm just going to make a little bit of a cone shape. I don't know if you guys can see that. We'll get a little closer. And I don't need the bottom of it to look, look like a cone because I'm only doing the top portion of my object right now. Now, the pour spout on my light bulb is just going to be the black end of my bulb. So I want to use that area right there as my pour spout. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I need this to fit right around that black portion. So I'm just going to cut out the inside of it so that it kind of fits right around it. I'm going to put it right on there. And there's a little pour spout or funnel or cone. Now, that's not very well supported, so just like I supported my light bulb, I'm going to put a little clay underneath it so that that doesn't fall down. Okay, so just to go back over again, I have a clean object, in this case a light bulb, I've drawn three parting lines on it. I'm, I'm only working with the first two of those parting lines on the first stage of my mold. And I've made myself a pour spout or funnel. And that is going to be part of the positive form of my light bulb in this case. Um, it's not part of the negative form of the mold itself. So now I need to make the negative form of the mold. So I'm going to take my clay slab that I cut out, it's one inch wide. And I'm going to place that just under my parting line. And notice that I've left this plenty long so that it extends all the way past my pour spout and it extends just barely past the point where my parting lines all meet up at the top of my bulb. And if your clay is nice and wet, like mine is, this will all stay in place pretty well. If your clay is pretty dried out, then you might need to wet it and it's gonna be a little harder to hold it in place. Now I want my clay wall to be perpendicular to the surface of my bulb. Notice though that you can see my Sharpie line right above my clay wall, all right? I want to be able to see that line just on the very top of my clay wall. Okay, so notice that I have also, I've kind of just started to seal it down all the way to my uh, pour spout there, right? I haven't molded the two together. I want a nice clear separation between the positive form of that pour spout and bulb. Remember, that's all one part of the positive form. And then this is creating a negative form around the bulb. So I want those to be very separate. I'm going to take my second slab and I'm going to cut just a square end. Okay, cut a square end. And I'm going to do my next wall over here so that it joins up nicely with my first wall. And I'm going to go around on the second side of my parting wall parting line and the two are going to join up in a nice little V groove. Again, I don't want to blend those two together into one surface. I want them to be separate and uh, come to a V groove. Notice that the two walls come out from the surface of my bulb at an angle that represents the third division of that circle. Now notice this one wasn't quite long enough. So I have um, a little space there that I still need to fill. So that's where it's good to have a little extra. Um, so what I'm going to do in this case, I'm actually going to cut it back a little ways so that I have something to stick to. And I'm just going to use a little bit more of my third one that I cut. And I'm just going to stick the two together. Okay, so you guys see how this is nice, nice and smooth. 
um, the cleaner that you work with this process um, from start to finish, the cleaner your mold will come out, your plaster, everything, um, and you'll have less cleanup to do once the plaster is set up. Uh, plaster is a pretty hard material to work with, and so once it has set, it's much harder to carve it and clean it up and fix surfaces. It's a lot easier to do it with wet clay and make everything nice and smooth and precise while the clay, while you're working with the clay, rather than having to go back and fix things uh, once they're in rigid plaster. Um, okay, so I'm just going to do some final cleanup touches on this. I'm going to smooth out the transition between the clay and the light bulb. And notice that I'm going along in the same direction as my clay wall. If I go in this direction, I'm going to be cutting a little groove into my clay and that's going to mess up the, the plaster. So make sure you're going smooth along your clay wall. And I'm going to do that both sides. I'm going to make sure that the clay gets pushed carefully into the threads of the light bulb. And then again at my pore spout, I just want that to be a nice clean transition. Okay, now I'm going to trim off my ends so they go straight out from the end of my pore spout. Nice and clean. Now, I don't want these clay walls to move once I start adding plaster. So I need to put support underneath them so that um, these can't fall down under the weight of the plaster. Okay, So some people do this differently. They build up a solid mass of clay and then they smooth out the top surface of it. I find that it's easier to roll out a flat surface, place that exactly where, where you want it, and then make a bunch of supports underneath it. So the supports can be just all the leftover clay that you have from rolling it out. Don't skimp on the support of your wall because the worst thing is when you start adding, doing the plaster portion of your mold and one of these walls slips and falls and then you basically have to clean everything off your light bulb and start all over again. And that's the worst feeling. So I'm going to really stuff plenty of clay underneath there. Okay, I'm back. I've put my support underneath the walls. You can see it's nice and solid amount of clay under there, all the way to the very tip of the pore spout. On the other side as well. Let's see, I need a little bit more under there. I'm just going to grab a little bit more clay and I'm going to stuff that under there. See, and a little bit more under here. You really don't want to skimp on this. So take your time to really support the underside of your wall. Okay, that looks pretty good. I don't think that wall is going to go anywhere. Okay, last step that we need before we can start plastering is we need some keys, some mold keys, which basically they're also called registration marks or registration keys, and they're going to keep the mold parts when we put them back together from shifting around. So I like to use the handle of my fettling knife. It's exactly the right size for this size mold. It works perfectly. The handle of another tool might work as well but you could, you'd have to kind of rotate it around to carve them out. And I'm just going to make a little indent. I don't want my indent to be right up against my light bulb because that would infringe on the actual strength of my mold wall. And you need only two or three of these. You want your key to be out near the outside edge of your wall. Okay. Sometimes I do two on one side and three on the other. They don't need to be super deep, just little imprints. There. Now my clay portion of my mold making process 
is all complete. So I have a nice clean edge. I've got plenty of support underneath my clay wall. I'm constantly cleaning these up, just making sure they're nice and clean. And I've got some, some keys, registration keys. The registration of your mold parts are how they fit together. And so the keys hold the registration in place. Last little bits of cleanup. And that should be pretty good to go. Notice there aren't any gaps along the edges of my wall where it beats my bulb. It's nice and smooth. Notice how clean everything is as far as the surface. Notice that my surface doesn't undulate too much. It's nice and straight, pretty much pretty straight. And it sticks out at a nice straight angle from my bulb from where it meets the surface of the bulb.